So why Meyer Lansky of all of the infamous gangsters over the decade? Well, I think he's probably one of the most compelling one because he, uh, you know, obviously is one of the most famous gangsters for a reason, but he formed the National Crime Syndicate, which was at one time one of the largest crime organizations in the world. What was unique about him is that um, he was a criminal, but he was also a very great mathematician and a great businessman, and he turned crime into a business and managed it and structured it like a business. And uh, I think that's why it was very compelling to me. And my father interviewed him before he passed away. So that, you know, that character of David Stone is loosely based on my father. And I used his research and transcripts from the interview. Wow. So that sounds really um, like you had a, an extra level of insight that other filmmakers wow. might not have had. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that kind of goes to, you know, written and directed by. I mean, that's a lot of responsibility. That's always a big deal in my book, you know, yeah. so were you always aware of him? Like tell, aside from that, obviously, what was some of the research you did? Well, my, well, my father, I grew up with stories about gangsters. I mean, he was also, he's an American history professor, but he, he had his expertise is also in American organized crime. So you grow up as a kid with these stories about gangsters and they sound like mythical characters from Greek mythology, you know, that lead these crazy adventures, dangerous lives. And, you know, have their own set of rules of conduct in the underworld and the fringes of civilized society. So I was always intrigued by the subject. Um, but doing the research, I had to do, I tried staying as objective as possible. So I really, um, I, I took my father's information and research, but I also did my own and, you know, tried putting the, the lines, connecting the dots and putting the lines together because at the end of the day, there's so many different perceptions of what happened, when it happened, who was there, who wasn't there, did he do it? Um, and I did take creative liberties in some scenes, not a lot. Mo most of what you'll see is historically accurate, but I did have to take some creative liberties to um, you know, emphasize certain elements of his life. A good scene, by the way, is an example is that forest scene with the husband and the wife. Mm. That's a great sequence. Like he did, he did some incredible things in his life, but yeah. he also, you know, hurt a lot of people as any gangsters want to do. Maybe I Maybe I personally try to force things into black and white when it's not really that simple unless you're talking about like like child porn enthusiasts or something. Yeah. Then it's very easy to put that into black and white. But um, you know, maybe this is an unfair question, but Lansky, good guy? You know, they always say that one man's, uh, uh, one person's terror, one man's terrorist is another man's hero. You know, I mean, he did a lot of bad you know, and he did a lot of bad choices and uh, I'm definitely not glorifying him, but at the same time, he also did a lot of good. What was interesting about him as opposed to other uh, gangsters, that there was a lot of them, they had a, a clear distinction between good and bad, you know. Uh, he always treaded a thin gray line between the two. Uh, whether you like him or hate him, I mean, that I think each, each audience member should come out and decide for himself. But I do think that there are a lot of lessons to be learned about morality, what's important in life. And at the end of the day, the core of the movie is about, it's about an old man coming to terms with his life. And he even says that, you know, I can't change my past, but I want, um, I want to change the perception of it. Um, so obviously he wasn't proud about many things that he did. Sure. Um, that kind of leads to, you know, I mean, even I am not dumb enough to step on the landmine that is talking about Israel. Yeah. The movie does such a great job of showing that like idealism turning into cynicism of like helping this developing new nation. And yeah. then in so many words and without spoiling anything, finding out there's not like a pot of gold at the end of that tunnel for him. Yeah, and I, and, I, and, I think, and I think that's an indication for, for any country when you choose a, a certain path in life. Uh, there are consequences to it. If you choose the path of being a criminal and doing certain things, uh, you're going to close doors. And he made a lot, a lot of mistakes in his life. And uh, I, th I think that uh, uh, towards an older age, he kind of like had to, um, you know, um, deal with them. And, uh, and a lot of the things that he expected and a lot of the perception of him wasn't his, his legacy wasn't the legacy that he wanted, maybe for a certain type of people in the history books, but I can I'm definitely, there were, there were a lot of things that he was ashamed of, and that was definitely one of the uh, hard moments of his life, uh, that a reality check that we got. 
Um, but you know, when that's the life that you choose, there are consequences. I tried not sugarcoating it. You know, I mean, it, it, it's historically accurate, and that's what happens. Um, you know, the U.S. government tried. Um, he was always at odds with them. In his entire life, they tried catching him. They couldn't. But at the same time, he was a patriot and helped in the World War II efforts. And that is, you know, kind of like that that line that he treaded, and you know, the paradox. Yeah. So I mean. I'm just thinking of applying it to my life. Like my mom fled her country and mm. the reason that she fled was because of, you know, American intervention in the region and where yeah. did she go? New York. Yeah. So it's but just, you know, and, 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 and this is also a story about the, I mean, the, for me, it was, uh, you know, I'm an American and I love America. I'm also uh, an Israeli, but you know, this is about the immigrant experience in America. I mean, we're all children of immigrants. He was uh, an immigrant from Russia where he was prosecuted because he was a Jew. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you, wherever you come from, we're all children of immigrants. And, uh, you know, he chose, a, a, had a tough life as an immigrant growing up in poverty and violence. And that's the life he chose. And some people choose otherwise. My grandfather came to America the same, also had the same life, but he was a, uh, you know, an ethical, moral, moral human being. So, you know, each one makes his own choice. Um, but it is a story about immigrants and about, you know, the American, uh, American history. Was it always, um, was it always going to be Harvey? Yes, for me, it was always, there was no question. I mean, obviously, because he's an amazing actor, but also Harvey is a New Yorker, you know, uh, and, uh, ex-Marine and a tough guy, uh, you know, there, and so there are a lot of similarities there. And he's probably the, some, one of the greatest actors in our generation. So, I mean, it was an obvious choice for him. And 100% Ashkenazi Jew, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think 100%, yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of a role where you don't want someone who's not Jewish yeah. to play that role. Like, right? Yeah, because I think that you, have, you, understand, you understand the culture, you understand where they came from, especially... Um, you know, being a, a, a Jewish, uh, growing up as a Jew uh, in America, you know, so I think he understood that. So did you cast, you know, most of his scenes are with Sam. Did you, did you do chemistry reads with the two of them together? Or what was like the process of getting his yeah, get, number? Yeah, when you get the actors like Sam Worthington and Harvey Keitel, you don't get to, you know, you, 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 get, you, you get them and you say yes, because they're just such great actors and stuff. But they did have amazing chemistry between, uh, between them. And, uh, you know, I think Sam gave him the space that he needed. And you have somebody with Harley Keitel, um, you just take it in and let him do his thing, because that's what great actors do. A director is only as good as the actors that he has at the end of the day. Um, you know, it's my job to make sure that I give them that space to do what they need to do and that I capture them. You know, at the end of the day, I'm capturing them for eternity. So my, my contract and my, it, with them is that I make them look good. Sure. They have to put their trust on me. Um, and this last question very quickly, um, you know, when you're, you're hanging out with Sam on set, are you ever like, hey, can you tell me anything about Avatar? And he's like, no. And you're like, oh, I tried. I'm like, do that scene from Avatar. <laughs> no, no. When, you're, when you're on set, you know, you're kind of like so focused because you enter into this world uh, that you're surrounded by, by, you know, um, uh, production design and the costume and stuff that you're completely consumed. Um, so, no, but I did ask him about experiences working on, on big budget movies and then other directors, obviously, just like, you know, and then and he shared that with me happily. It was a, a great experience working with Sam. And he's, he's a good well, guy. Lansky is a really good movie, Thank beating you. heart at the center of, you know, that gangster shell. Uh, <laughs> you nailed it. You don't need me to tell you. And uh, whatever you do next, I hope to catch you for that one, too. Thank you. I appreciate it.